Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what part of the world you are in. This is the Big Girl Diary. Okay. Just when you think Esme Bianco has gone in this night, has gone down the pedo someplace, you think she's gone. No. No. Not a chance. Not a chance. Not a chance. She found her way back in the news. Now, I know this is old news, but it's new to me and something that crept up onto my feed. Now, we all know her allegations. She said that she was H trafficked by getting, getting a ticket, getting on the plane, going from e England over to California, get off the plane, and goes to work for Marilyn Manson, but that's age trafficking. Um, it is outrageous. However, that's the story that she's sticking to. Well, now is something else. Death tone. She is claiming that Marilyn Manson is keeping her from working. Um, okay. This is something rather interesting, keeping her from working. Figure this, figure this. All of that is done, sue the man, get money, and then want to still work with him in some way? Are you mad? But then Corey Feldman. Oh, and this is hard to my heart, um, but I go where the information goes. So that's where I go. It leads to Corey Feldman, even though I don't like it. But however, I look at, I grew up with Corey Feldman and he's a little older than I am, but I'm just like, OMG. The oh, two Corys, Corey, Corey Feldman and Corey Hames. And I was a huge, and still am a huge fan. But however, I have to look where the information's taken me. So Corey Feldman has his own allegations, which I'm going to talk about. Now, and Amber Heard, <laughs> she's the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, she just recently, I have to go on to my Instagram, made a speech and her, um, I don't know how Eve Bartlow fits into this. I truly do not understand it, but she's still Amber Heard's best supporter even though she slobber knocked her in Israel on camera in a Israeli uh, hotel. I, hey, 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 to each its own. If you want to keep on helping out Amber Heard in spite of the things that happened, hey, you go right ahead. If you love it, I mean, if, uh, if, if you like it, hey, you go for it. Let's get to it. Let me share my <coughs> screen. Now, if you want to get into, uh, let's see, where is it at? Okay, I would strongly suggest you all things Marilyn Manson, check out Marilyn Manson Uncanceled, does a great job and is up to up to par on everything dealing with Marilyn Manson. So check out Marilyn Manson um, um, Uncanceled. You do great work. Okay. Now here is something about um, uh, Esme talked about her back, so you know, it's just, just outrageous. But there is something in particular. Let's 
something in particular I would like to get next to, and for some reason I can't, I can't seem to find it. I, I found it, and uh, right now this is embarrassing, but let me come back to this. Let me come back to this. Um, Okay, here. Should have started off with this. Okay. Um, Esme Bianco claims Marilyn Manson forced De Deptone to cut her off of their uh, tour visuals. Now, this was right around the time when she was suing him, saying that he did all of these things and that Deptone was going to uh, had... Um, shot some videos of her and whether if they put it in or not that right there is is uncertain so for her to make these allegations and adding marilyn manson to it i think to me is a bit much because it's all speculation and now talking about going back to court and reaming him again so here um okay as you can see here okay one of the many accusers uh who came forward against a shock rocker marilyn manson was a game of thrones star esme bianco who accused a musician of physical and psychological abuse when she sued him and the assistant for mexual and please you see it okay um uh a shot i'll say that and mex uh tariff king in a lawsuit and a judge allowed the proceedings so along these lines this is what she's saying hey you know you're keeping me from working and it's like uh really so here the report of Rolling Stones and uh, a new motion filed Monday in the um, district court of the uh, Central District of California. Manson decided to confront the ban over Deftone uh, uh, decision to work with Miss Bianca. Now, this right here is all alleged, okay? So, so I think it's a bit much. And also used his power and influence in the entertainment industry to uh, infer with, or I'm sorry, to interfere with Miss Bianco's ability to continue to work with Deftones. Now, hold on for a second, hold on. Wait a minute, no. No, because, no. Because when these allegations came out, he lost many engagements. Um, his art was gone. Uh, he did uh, tours and art galleries. Um, his um, uh, music, uh, his his um, record label dropped him. So her saying that he had all this influence. Now, if that happened before, then I would say, yeah, I most definitely believe what she's saying. No, it is most definitely, I believe, untrue because by that time, his reputation has been damaged to the point to where no one would touch him with a 20-foot pole. The only one who did was Kanye West. And he received a lot of backlash, a lot of the other guys who worked with him, and he was working with rappers. Now, rappers have a bad reputation to begin with. So, <laughs> so, so just with that, I mean, no, we, we got to dig a little deeper on that. All right. So here, um, in exchange for providing her image, Ms. Bianco expected the electronic um benefit of the 
the elect, I'm sorry, the economic benefit from the significant public public exposure and the band's worldwide tour and opportunity to continue to work with the high, highly sought after creative director who oversaw the project. Now, that I understand. But now here is what really, really gets me because then Bianca tells Rolling Stone, and this is all coming from her mouth, okay? Nothing to substantiate it, nothing to say, oh, well, okay, uh, I got this information, it came from this person, or I got this on video, or I got this on tape, none of that. Just what she's saying. Now, if you can believe someone that was H tariffed, okay, from England to the United States to where she came by herself, got on the plane and landed in LAX and start working for Marilyn Manson and that is H tariff. Then in her lawsuit, she uses a statue or a law that is for children in El Salvador, Honduras and Mexico to prove her case, you know, look, I can, I can, I can sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. All right, I can sell you that because this is ridiculous. So she goes on to say, she said, tell, tell the Rolling Stones, flipping out, flipping out, and um, was having a complete meltdown about the fact that I was working with Deftones and they decide to cut the footage. The consensus has been reached that it was easier to cut me than to deal with Brian Warner, the real name, uh, someone in Deft, uh, Deftones decided to scrap me because Brian, Brian calling them. Um, by continuing to threaten the careers and opportunity Warner gained. Um, uh, demonstrates that the admitted criminal investigation and the civil allegations, he will stop at nothing in the attempt to silence his victims. Oh, come on. Look, no. Again, as I said, when all of this occurred, when they made the allegations, he had nothing. He lost so much. So whatever, whatever um, clout he had, whatever influence he had, it was gone. Nothing. It was gone. Totally gone. So for her to make these, to, to say that to Rolling Stone, to put that out there is furthering. Uh, Furthering um, to, in my opinion, to add more smear to her campaign against him. Now, for her to make money, he paid her off, even though sometimes, okay, because he settled out of court, it doesn't mean that he lost. No, actually, he won. But the way other people see it is see that, oh, he paid her off to get her out the blah, blah, blah. No. What? Paid her off and said goodbye. Just, just, just go away, and that's what happened. So I guess she went through the money too quickly because now she's talking about going back to court, talking about death tones, and them taking her out of the video. Now we all know. Well, okay. Whenever you video or make a film, or even a video, and I do this myself in editing. I look at pieces that I want to keep that I don't want to keep and those that I don't want to keep I scrap and it's done so for the uh, uh, so for whatever reason why they took Esme Bianco out of the video was them now for her to suggest that Marilyn Manson had something to do with it by him using his influence when his reputation was terribly tarnished like I said, he couldn't even work with someone in 20, 20, 20 feet away. He couldn't work with anybody how badly his reputation was tarnished. Everybody was pulling away from him 
And while she's saying, oh, well, he uses influence to get me out. So, you know, it's his fault. He's, you know, he's keeping me from making money. No, no, it's you. And what you did, you, you did that to that man. So as far as that, no, I don't believe that at all. At all. Uh, so then she goes, wait a minute. I'm sorry, let me share mine. Tell me what? So then she goes on to say, um, uh, the complicity of those who enabled these intimidation tactics demonstrates why survivors are so hesitant to come forward if um, if those who hold power and stand up to the abusers uh, choose not. And 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 again, as I said, as I said, for all the reasons that you know that I stated, no. Just go back to when all this occurred, when the allegations came out, when all these women came out of the woodworks and everybody wanted to sue. Nothing was done criminally at all. Nothing. They all sued for money. Every single last one of them sued for money. This is ridiculous. And just to. OK. All right. So then. So then. Uh, uh, Deftones, um, who's currently ranking or ranks now, include the former uh, Marilyn Manson's bassist, uh, Freddie Sablon, are not added uh, to the defendants in the suit. Okay, so. But it, it, it goes on. It, it, it doesn't stop. You, you would think that it would stop. No, it doesn't. Hold on, let me bring this up right here. Okay, here. So it, it's only going back into what I was saying, but it gives a bit more info. So here, we went over that through the legal, legal document, we went through that. But here it says, apparently, uh, Bianco filmed a video that was suppressed to be used as a part of the stage set for the Delphalix, uh, uh, Deftones current tour, according to a motion she filed on Wednesday, April, April 20, 27th of this year. So she's filed this. She's like, OK, you know, I'm. I'm She's out to destroy this man. In my opinion, she's out to destroy him, like um, being eliminated by a thousand cuts. She's doing a thousand cuts. Uh, the motion um, continued in exchange to provide her images. Miss Bianco expects an economic benefit from the significant um, public exposure via the band's world tour an opportunity to continue working with the highly sought after creative director who oversaw the project. Yeah. So here again, talking about um, the actress alleges, keep in mind, alleges she didn't bring any in from no, no proof. I can go there and say, Hey, you, you, you didn't like my video and you didn't subscribe. And then I go tell everyone that. I go tell, yes, yes, you, you, yes. Let me pull this down. Yes, you, you didn't like my video and you didn't subscribe and, and, and you kept me from making money. You kept me from doing all this stuff and I'm telling people magazine, I'm telling read it and everyone who would listen to me it's simply allegations that's all that it is i don't have any proof i don't take a screenshot that you didn't like my video that you didn't subscribe to my channel that you didn't go to my <laughs> instagram i mean you can go on and on and on and that's all that it is are allegations anyone can allege anything anyone i can allege that you have purple hair 
It doesn't mean that you do. I'm just simply making that allegation. I'm alleging it. Now, she's ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. Evan Rachel Wood can pick some, woo, some good hit women. Sheesh. Okay, in a statement of Rolling Stones, Bianco um, further claimed that Manson flipped out uh, and was having a complete meltdown about the fact that I was working with the Delphonts and they decided to cut my footage. Okay, how does she know? How? How does she know that he flipped out? Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I thought I put that up. How does she know? How? Where is the proof? Again, all allegations. She alleged that. Oh, he flipped out. Um, in it, he flipped out, a meltdown, screaming, and how, come on. Oh, my goodness. Who's going to listen to all this dribble? Well, the judges have to. No matter how ridiculous it sounds, look, they listen to Amber Hurt. Oh, my God. That's like pulling wax at, wax out of your ears. All right. Uh, uh, per the allegations filed in her legal filing, Manson used his power to influence the essential industry to interfere with Miss Bianco's ability to continue working with the death tones, causing Bianco uh, reputational uh, damage and loss of future income opportunities. Um, really? Marilyn Manson has not regained anything that he has lost. Um, okay. You, Evan Rachel Wood, are still working while Marilyn Manson, his career is on hold, hasn't gone on tour. Whatever he was doing with Kanye West is on hold, all of those things. But then again, you're still working and have the gall, the nerve. Okay, let me not get upset. <laughs> Deftones are not among defendants listed on the on the legal motion. She, you, don't, you, you can't make this stuff up. She's saying that all this is occurring and Marilyn Manson is doing it, but not uh, saying anything to Deftones. They, they, they probably saw, okay, let me get rid of her. I, she's a complete mess and I don't want to wind up like Marilyn Manson. Let me cut her out and goodbye. We, we we did thank you. You did a great job. We just couldn't use your images. Okay, in a um, okay, in a coincidence that the band recently hired a former Marilyn Manson bassist, Fred uh, Subline, and let me see, it goes on in here. Ah, the mastermind herself, Evan Rachel Wood. But um, now, um, <laughs> now here, Corey Feldman. Now it's sort of like two articles mixed into one, which is great for me. Um, now this is hard, okay, because I am a Corey Feldman fan. Oh man, this is really hard, but I can most definitely be, I'm just going to take me, I'm going to go where the evidence goes, where the information goes, and regardless of how I feel about Corey Feldman, it has no bearing on where the information takes me. So the fact that I bring it up proves that. So, all righty. Okay, here, it basically reiter reiterates a lot of stuff. Let's see. All right. Okay, here, let's see what he said. Says. Happened on tour. Yeah. <laughs> Would you care to elaborate? What are some of the craziest things that you... Oh, wait a minute. Sorry about that. Let me 
me try it again. You had uh, uh, previously alluded to some crazy things that happened on tour. Yeah. <laughs> Would you care to elaborate? What are some of the craziest things that you've seen on the road? Okay, well, I mean, the Heavenly tour was definitely the uh, exact opposite of that. Uh, it was <laughs> the Hellish tour, Corey's Hell tour is really what it should have been called, but that was due to infiltration. Uh, we had literally infiltration on our last tour. We had people that were sent in that were spies that were not actually there to be musicians, but rather there to cause mayhem. And uh, this was when I hired all the girls. So uh, it was it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. So uh, they were. When was this? This was on our last tour, the, the 2017 tour. When I had to shut it down amidst the tour, we had done like 80 shows. It was supposed to go international, um, but unfortunately, uh, there were some people planted into the tour that were literally caused problems uh, they were purposely singing off key purposely playing wrong parts you know doing stuff like that so that okay now um by him saying plants and i, I don't i don't know i don't know i'm listening to what he's saying but i have to do more i i've done a couple of videos on this but i need to do more digging on this because Corey's saying this is what Marilyn did, but it's like, okay, he put plants in there, but why? Why would Marilyn Manson put plants in his tour when Marilyn Manson is a much bigger star? Now, Corey's known for his films back in the 80s and 80s and 90s, and I guess he sort of fell off in the mid, um, in the beginning of the 2000s, but still, Corey, I'm, I'm not following you here, but let's get back to what he's saying. That we would get negative attention, negative reviews, and then, you know, made all these terrible allegations after the tour ended saying we didn't feed them and we didn't pay them and they didn't shower and just stupid stuff. Uh, but it went on and on. And, um, you know, that was a, a nightmare for us. Obviously, we had all kinds of stuff we had to deal with us with with because of that. Um, and, you know, it, it, it left a bad taste in my mouth. And especially given the fact that we were doing so well, there was so much success. There was so much positive energy. Um, I mean, the bus broke down 10 times. It happened to be Marilyn Manson's bus. And when I say happened to, I use that term lightly um okay i gotta keep on i'm sorry for stopping because i got to because youtube and i just don't want any issues okay now okay he's saying marilyn manson's bus right so he's touring he's touring and he's using marilyn manson's bus corey you are ungrateful beyond belief you are ungrateful Marilyn Manson loans you his bus so that you can tour and make money. And then now it's all of these, um, you're having this issue and this issue. Well, look, look, look at Lizzo. Okay. Lizzo has her own, her own, um, issues with her background dancers, but she's not suggesting that, um, that Kanye West, uh, uh, his influence and and he did it and he's no 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 come on Corey and this is hard for me to say but you're gonna have to take some responsibility what are you doing now if your uh, people that you hired are having an issue with you you might want to take a step back and listen to what they're saying what you know what are, what are they complaining about and if they are complaining um then you might want to stop and take a look at what you're doing i'm sorry corey all right let me get back to the it happened to be also marilyn manson's bus driver and it also happened to be marilyn manson's girlfriend that was part of the band or one of his girlfriends or whatever so uh yeah we'll just leave it at that <laughs> Do you, do you know who uh, put the infiltrators up to it? Well, uh, if it smells like a horse and it looks like a horse, 
chances are it's a horse. So, so you think it was Marilyn Manson? Because I know you had some uh, pretty strong words about him. Uh, what was it last year? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was the reason why, because we collected all the evidence and we found out everything that we found out, which was that yes, he was heavily involved in trying to infiltrate that tour. I, I don't really know the reason. Okay, before you even go any further, now this is really hard for me. Again, I'm going to say this is really hard for me because I am a big fan of Corey Feldman along with Marilyn Manson, but come on, Corey. Come on now. This this is sounding a bit... You're sounding a lot like Evan Rachel Wood. I mean, if you know, if he's doing all this orchestrate, I'm or, that he's orchestrating all these things, uh, could it be Evan Rachel Wood orchestrating all of these things? Could it be her? I mean, heck, she... she Oh, oh my goodness, an FBI letter, <laughs> an FBI letter that she used in two jurisdictions to not only get her child from her ex-husband, but also slobber knocker Marilyn Manson. And if she go that far, you're not looking at, and then his then his ex-girlfriend, which ex, ex-girlfriend was it? Um, Evan Rachel Wood, because she's a singer. Was she in the group? I mean, come on. I just, Corey, I'm, I'm trying to back you, but it's very, very, very difficult. And while I'm staying with the evidence that you're putting out there, it doesn't, it's not, it's not meshing. It's like you're taking a noodle and you're trying to throw it on a, on a, on a, on, on a wall to make it stick. It just keeps on falling off. No, Corey, I'm sorry, no. Reason. I can't tell you, uh, other than the fact that we just know that he was behind the scenes of a lot of stuff. Um, do you do you remember any of the evidence, apart from what you've mentioned? It was the, the the tour bus and his relationship with some of the people. Right. I mean, like basically, you know, one day we're on the bus and the driver starts telling us this awful story, which I'm not going to repeat because I don't want to tell you know tales out of school but let's just say you know the bus driver told us about this very abusive type behavior that he was exhibiting and these girls were laughing and thought it was funny and i was shocked by that and then um as a result uh they kind of slipped up and he was like well i've seen you on here before and she's like what do you mean i've seen you here before and he's like yeah we saw you last summer and she's like oh this is the same bus and he's like yeah and I'm like, what are you guys talking about? You know, and that's when it kind of came out. Uh, so they, it wasn't just that, you know, the physical evidence we found later that attached certain things to certain things, but uh, they point blank said it right in front of us, you know, pretty much. How did, how did those people get hired? Uh, through Facebook, unfortunately. See, I was very sloppy. Uh, you know, we were kind of desperate at the time because we had announced the tour. We had a really good band and then a couple of the band members fell out for one reason or another. They couldn't make it. And we had to scatter at the last minute to try and find new players. So I put out an open Facebook post and said we were doing an open casting call for, you know, young females who were attractive, who could play multiple instruments that were willing to wear this ridiculous costume on stage. Uh, because, you know, I mean, a lot of rock and roll girls don't really want to do that. But, um, you know, look at if you if you are willing to wear wings and a halo and and dress like an angel, then, you know, you can come audition. Uh, so we kind of left it open to anybody. And the other thing we did. Okay, you said it yourself, Corey, you opened it up. You, you, you went, <laughs> you went to Facebook and then you opened it up to anybody and you got anybody. Uh, oh my. Okay. All right. It was open our house up to people and let them stay there if they needed so it was kind of it was we were the perfect patsy do you think that the people uh who were responsible for this got what they wanted yes absolutely absolutely well the tour shut down but i you know that was after the third tour so we'd done three legs and on the third leg it wasn't necessarily because of them that it shut down it was because of the fact that the me too movement had started and there was all this pressure on me to name names name names all this stuff and that's when i actually decided to just kind of 
you know, freeze everything and, you know, serve the higher good and make my documentary because I felt that that was what needed to happen at that point. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, Cor Corey, you went past, oh, we had to shut it down. You, you, you went past that too quick and you didn't explain why. I mean, you were very vague, and this right here is hard for me to say. But I'm sorry, I I'm 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 not really. I'm having a hard time believing what you're saying. I really am, because you're shifting everything to Marilyn Manson. Now, let me ask you: Are you gearing up for a lawsuit yourself? Because Marilyn Manson's getting sued left and right. He has all these women that he employed and now all of a sudden are turning against him to say that, that he did this and this and this. So let me sue him. And, and Esme Bianco got a knot. I, I don't know how much she got, but she took it and left. Now she's coming back. So Corey, sorry. And even looking at the, um, the the interviewer, even looking at you like, I don't know, Corey, this is a bit off. I don't know, but but let let let's get to the <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. You're gonna love this one. Oh my goodness. The gift that keeps on giving. Okay, right here. The online and offline worlds are inextricably linked. Now, uh, this was posted uh, by by Eve Bartlow, and uh, <laughs> this is me being a little snarky here and putting Depp and Manson on the bottom. So just listen to what she's saying. Just listen. The notion that they are isolated from one another or somehow separate is false. An action in the digital world can and does have real ramifications in the real world. Once private, intimate content is released to the internet, it is virtually impossible to remove it from online spaces, further subjecting victims to harassment and judgment from strangers and acquaintances alike. <coughs> it can result and often does, in devastating economic, social, psychological, and even physical consequences. Okay, I know some may be thinking, okay, she's a Hollywood actress. She, that might be sad, but she must be used to a certain level of, of, of being exposed in the public. And while that's true, that I do and am represented on the internet and in various motion pictures as characters, I can tell you right now, standing in front of you as a human being, that having this part, this kind of exposure of your life goes far beyond any character you could play or any family you could be attached to. This is your life. And it can't. The online and offline worlds are inextricably linked. The notion that they are isolated from one another or somehow separate is false. An action in the digital world can and does have Okay. Now, let me get to Esme. Um, come on here. Oh, no. Okay, here we are. Now, there was something that I saw that I wanted to, where is it at? Oh, a snake, that's scary. Oh, she's also a Neo Burlex, Burlex dancer. That's nice. Okay. 
Here we go. Now, um, now it, it, it just seems like that there's like uh, working. Excuse me. Look, you don't, you don't, you don't have a relationship and work with the person. It's either one or the other. It never goes well, especially if if someone believes that they're going to get married or are having something more. But here she says, uh, by the time I entered into an intimate relationship with Marilyn Manson, I already had been H trafficked. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, okay. Do you see how this com uh, conflicts? She's saying here, I entered into an intimate relationship with Mar Marilyn Manson, and I already had been age trafficked in physically and emotionally. Um, by him, years later. I was diagnosed with PTSD. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. What is this? Um, oh, I can't even come up with a, a, another acronym for PTSD, but this right here, what she says, is absolutely bonkers. Okay. It gets better. Uh, I started to identify and process what happened. I was filled with shame and guilt. Really? Okay. I had the same question so many other people who heard stories like mine. Why uh, why enter, stay in a relationship with someone who hurts you? Someone uh, of the answer lies in the understanding of how trauma bonds between the abuser and the victim uh are formed um okay coupled with the fact that many survivors are not able to diagnose or recognize behaviors as abusive while it's happening while it's happening to them okay oh wait, wait this 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 is this is a bit dark going why it's not working this is a bit much Okay, okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait a minute. Esme, I got the same question. Oh, wait a minute. Let me put on my microphone. <clears throat> Esme, I have the same question. Um, you enter into a relationship, a romantic or intimate relationship, and say that you were H tariffed, and then you were physically and psychologically abs, and it took you years later to realize. Now, I got a question. I mean, what? <laughs> How can I say this? No matter how I say it, it's going to sound terrible. Um, what are you into? If someone is physically and psychologically abs you and you don't know the difference, if you're walking around with your eyes shut or however you may be um, looking after having an intimate uh, a moment, with Marilyn Manson, and you're saying you're having you're having all these issues, and you don't know it. What are you into? I mean, it, it makes no sense that you don't know that you were in a toxic, bad relationship. I mean, come on. All right, let's get back to this. But I mean, it, it, it's wild. It's really wild. So then she's is happening to them and sometimes cannot um, and sometimes cannot name it until years later. 
another trauma um, defense mechanism, PTSD symptoms. It starts to become clearer why survivors like myself gravitate towards a person hurting them the most. All right. Um, I offer this information to those who wish to learn and those who are supporting a survivor like um, in their life, and most importantly, survivors like myself who struggle to process their their experiences. Well, I, I, I can most definitely see that you're struggling with, uh, with, with your processes because I don't think they're yours. I don't think they're your processes. Look, there are those people that help people that have these situations. And I had a friend that was in an abusive situation, I mean, terribly abusive, and she had epilepsy along with it. And for you to take your story and say such outlandish things, and might I add that when you said that, that uh, when you said that you were age tariffed, I looked into it. I looked into the law that your lawyer used that was used. This is why I don't believe you. Your lawyer used laws for children from Honduras, El Salvador, and Mexico that was tariffed that way coming into the United States. Not getting on a freaking plane of your own accord by yourself, coming here to the United States, getting off that freaking plane, going to the man's house and working for him, and then all of a sudden you said you were H tariff? Really, Esme? Okay, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get upset. I'm not gonna get upset. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna allow your foolishness upset me while you were saying that you had this experience happen to you when you're using other women's experiences and you're wearing it like a badge of honor while you sue the man. You make it very hard to keep people from losing their cool because this is ridiculous. And I protected my friend from an abusive uh, guy, and and it and it became physical. Yeah, and women like you make it very hard for women like my friend to take that step to go to the police, not, not 10, 15 years later, when you need money, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. She got out of it and needed help. And those of us are there to help. And you're using that pin. Okay, let's go back to her. Okay, and it was something else I wanted to show that I hopefully not get upset. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get upset. Okay, um, here. I am naming the person that abused me and all this noise. And now she goes on to say, um, when was this? This was like, what, uh, two years ago. I'm naming the person who abused and H tariffed me, and his name is Marilyn Manson, born Brian Warmer. I am coming forward after years of living in the unthinkable trauma. I um, I endured at the hands of a, oh my goodness, an S predator, a serial predator. I hope he sues her because she is slandering him. This is slanderous. And this is why it's hard for me to even look at when you said that Deftone cut you out and Marilyn Manson kept you from making uh, an income while you're doing it. You know something, a woman? Endured at the hands of a serial predator known as Marilyn Manson. I am speaking up now in my own way, and I am sharing this story with others because he must be held accountable. 
no one should ever go through what I went, uh, what I, also many other survivors, have experienced. It is important that we all understand that people can be uh, abused and tariffed by an intimate partner. Okay. Okay, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Let's stop here for a second. Let's stop here. Wait a minute. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Lord have mercy. You know, um, Esme, there are little girls in other countries. There are young girls in other countries. There are young girls in this country. Matter of fact, you're talking about being age trafficked. Uh, about 15 years ago, maybe close to 20, there was a girl, a family out in Germantown, Maryland. The father ran a brothel and had his daughter and his wife. Okay. And, um, and there are many stories when people get to the point to where they cannot afford um, to have a decent standing in life to where they're getting ready to lose everything, then they do certain things. But you, you, I'm trying so hard not to be judgmental, but when I look at this stuff and I look at what happened to Marilyn Manson reading the, um, the uh the declarations and the motions and everything I, no i don't believe you i don't but let me go back to this partner boyfriend and husband uh we must address the the misconception around human tariffs because it can happen to anyone it happened to me you know mm -mm -mm. And let me see, there's something else. Oh, Lord. And I can't find, um, what's her name? Um, Evan Rachel Woods. But, you know, Esme, this is just simply not a good look at all. And when you look into her story, when you look into the declarations and what she said and look at the laws her her lawyer used it's like, no all right but okay let me unshare this yeah so what do you think um now she's saying that um Marilyn Manson is keeping her from making money, stopping her from making economical money because she did some work with Deftones and she's making all these allegations. To me, she's revving up for another lawsuit. Let me go ahead and ream him again. I don't think I got enough money from him H tariffing me when I got on a plane by myself. No one was holding her hand or pushing her along onto the plane. No, she did it by herself. She came over here by herself, immediately got into a romantic relationship by herself. She was age traffic to where she got up and went to work, <laughs> made movies, but she was age traffic, age traffic. Okay, all right, I, I didn't know. Matter, matter of fact, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. I wanna show you Is it here? I want to show you. Okay, hold on for a second. Let me bring this down. Because I want to. One of those people who's getting sued is going to hire you. I see you here sitting there picking their stuff apart and making them look stupid. I wouldn't be surprised if Marilyn Manson then comes to I want to hire you. <laughs> okay, continue. Okay, I'm going to show you. Um, hold 
hold on, I'm coming up. I'm coming up. I, I want you to see what she's saying that happened to her. This is on my other channel, and I'm just trying to find it. And um, where is it at? Oh my goodness, where is it at? Oh my goodness. Ooh. Okay, I'm trying to find it, and now that I want to find it, everything is jumbled all over the place. No, that's not it. And that guy is creepy. I'm going to show you what H. Terrifying looks like, because what she's describing and what it actually is are two different things, because you don't get up and go to work. No, you don't do that. You don't go to work. You don't go make movies. You don't travel to different countries and then say that these things happen to you. That is not what occurs. And now that I can't find it is a huge problem at this very second. Oh, man, I think I went too far. OK. Or unless if Instagram took it down. Mm. Where is it? Dark on it. Okay. It looks like Instagram took it took it down. And it is something that um No, that's not it. Okay, let me look down because I think I mean it's 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 heartbreaking. I'm really trying to find this because I I want you to have uh um a bird's eye not a bird's eye view but a a a strong idea of what she's saying that happened to her and then look at what police see because what police see and what she's saying are two different things so and it's very upsetting when people take other people's traumas and use that against other people to get uh, uh, some kind of economical gain and it never happened to you. Some people call that stolen valor or whatever, but I think they took it down. I really think they did take it down. Doggone it. Sheesh. They took it down. I'm sorry. I keep on scrolling, hoping that it will pop up. Oh, man. Yeah, they took it down. They took it down. Yeah, yeah, they took it down. OK. Okay, I'm sorry, they took it down. I really hope that they, um, oh, man, it, it, it really, it really would have lent a better understanding of what that really looks like.
And um, just trying, I really, really want you to see it. Is this it? No, that's not it. Okay, I'm still trying to find it. But what do you think? Esme Bianco blaming Marilyn Manson for Deftone not putting her in the video while they are on a world tour to get her more exposure blaming Marilyn Manson. He he did this. He had a meltdown. Um, he's keeping me from having economical gains. Then you have Corey Feldman who's saying that, well, Marilyn Manson put plants while he was using Marilyn Manson's bus, Marilyn Manson's bus driver to help him. I mean, the entitlement is just through the roof. And again, I'll say it again. I was a big fan, grew up on um, of Corey Feldman and how he is saying that the bus breaking down, Marilyn Manson did it, you know, um, Marilyn Manson um, put plants in his um, in his uh, in, in his group. One of the per people that was there was Marilyn Manson's girlfriend or one of his girlfriends that Corey Feldman hired. And then he goes to uh, uh, Facebook and has an open audition. So because he had to do that, that's Marilyn Manson's fault. No, Corey, you're not taking responsibility at all and for what you do. And there are people coming out saying that you are not the best uh, person in the world to work for. So <laughs> come on now. But everything is Marilyn Manson's fault. OK, pretty soon people are going to say Marilyn Manson is responsible for global warming. It's his fault. Um, it's Marilyn Manson's fault for uh, carbon, too much carbon in the air. I, I don't know, something wild. They blame him for everything. So what do you say? What say you? <laughs> you, can't, you can't make this up. I'm going to have to find that video of that woman who was h tariff so that you can really see it. And when you do, and then you look at Esme Bianco getting on a freaking plane buying a ticket. I mean, I'm, I'm really stuck on that. And I'm really angry about that. Really angry because that is a horrible label. And it's a label to put on someone. And no matter how much they try to, to shake that, it's always there. And then he, you know, um, settled in court. I knew he did it. I knew he did it. That's why he paid her off. He paid her. I got to decompress. I got to decompress. So based on what I said, what do you think? Do you think that this is just something that these two people are coming up with? And I love the Amber Heard part, how she's talking. <laughs> Amber's a gift that keeps on giving. I mean, you, you just, you just got to love her. You have to uh, love her from a distance, a far distance. Like, please go back to Spain, Amber. Please, please go back there. Okay. But on that note, I want to thank you for stopping by. Please like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Bye-bye.